moving on the aggressor side here that we've been winning this war against uh, terrorism is ludicrous. We're right. facing a new danger now that is going after our people over there, which is threatening to become an actual country. And no one seems willing to take it on in the entire region. And we're not taking it on. How can you say we're winning, like he just said, the Admiral just said? Well, that was MSNBC's Chris Matthews, stunned that the Pentagon this week suggested America is somehow winning the larger war on terror. And he is not the only one on the left worried about the way things are going. Bernard Whitman is a Democratic pollster and president of C and CEO of Whitman Insight Securities. The president taking heat this week for Dianne Feinstein, saying he's too cautious on this issue. Jane Harman came out. Al Franken's complaining. More and more, we're hearing a growing chorus on the left saying he's not doing enough. Why? Well, I think the fact is America is facing its greatest foreign policy challenge in an awfully long time. The Democrats are in power, and they are feeling heat. And the answer is we need a three-pronged approach. There is no question, I think, that Jane Harman is right. The president needs to be out there doing more and saying more. I I think, number one, we do need to strike at the heart of ISIS. We need to get them out of Iraq. We can't do that on our own. We've got to engage the Kurds. We've got to engage the Iraqis. They ultimately will be the ones to lift, to He's really make the big lift. Number two, we have to make sure that they are ready to deal with a resurgence and a reemergence of ISIS. And the only way to do that is to encourage this new government to actually distribute power, distribute resources, get that. the Sunnis, that get was, the Kurds. We were behind the in regime there. change in Iraq. And, and, and number three, I do think that we can take a page out of HW's playbook and put together an international coalition. And frankly, unfortunately, until recent okay, weeks, he's trying all until that. recent weeks, there was no international pressure but to do this. But President Obama is trying all of that, and yet still, you've got you've got criticism coming from corners that are typically behind President Obama. Why? I think we need the president to be more actively engaged, to be forceful, to be at the NATO summit, encouraging the other leaders, including Arab nations, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, to get involved and deal with this. It's going to take an awfully long time. Do you think they are surprised at how he is handling this? Do I think that? No, because Obama is a deliberative thinker. This is not anything new, but he actually does need people from the left and the right around him to, to sort of help force this issue. I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, we are I a democracy. Deliberative thinking is good. It's very good, especially when you're talking about a potential generational conflict. We're, we're going to send blood and treasure in there. I mean, you know, American troops potentially facing this group. Uh, but you need, to, you need to make a call, and you need to be on it. And when you have the president misrepresenting the start of this whole thing is when they captured Mosul, when five months prior to that they captured Fallujah, and he was calling them JV, people wonder whether he is getting it. Well, I think the fact is that our intelligence on the ground is getting better and better at assessing the threat here. Oh, it wasn't that long ago. Hold on. The, wasn't the that long ago, knew. It wasn't that long ago that John McCain wanted to arm ISIS Forget to fight John McCain. Assad. Who's talking about John McCain? Look, he's a spokesman on the right for, the, for foreign policy. He wanted to arm ISIS to fight Assad. This is a morphing, growing threat that we have to deal with. And I fact, frankly, until recent weeks, I don't think it was clear exactly, oh, exactly the intensity of the threat and the ability of the international community and the reason for the international when, community. You don't think when they were flying their black Al-Qaeda flags over Fallujah and Ramadi in January and the president was calling him JV, he had reason to think, uh-oh. Look, I think that the intelligence on the ground obviously didn't pick up the extent yes, to which... Yes, it did. The intelligence... We just reported... Catherine Harris just had this report yesterday. The intel was telling him. The intel community was telling him it's growing and you need to do something about it. But the fact it. is, do you think the Maliki government was going to be able to support that? And for A... Well, and why, B, we and pushed B, him out last month. Why the, didn't we push him out last January? Would the American January? people have supported putting another 150,000 troops in Iraq? Absolutely I don't know not. If, and no one's frankly, proposing that. Frankly, when the troops were there, that's when ISIS fled out of Iraq into Syria, and that's why we're in the problem we're in today. Always good to see you, Bernard. Great to see you. We'll be right back, coming up on Hannity as well.